This is the major scale, jazz, past, present, future, and everything in between. Our idea of a magazine that meets a mixtape, with lots of interviews, lots of music, with lots of classics, the underrated, the unexpected, the unhindered, and the soon to be heard. In this episode, Brian Lynch joins us to talk about his Grammy-nominated album, My Dear Latino, a Latin interpretation of the music of Woody Shaw, and then later we're joined by Tanner Johnson, an unsigned talent who proudly carries the torch of violin greats Stefan Grappelli and Jean-Luc Ponty. Brian Lynch is the kind of artist that any fan or music enthusiast loves to meet. He has a resume that's jaw-dropping and kind of makes you want to brag for him. Since the 1980s, this guy has played and performed with a cross-section of musical greats, and I mean greats. In jazz, he was in Art Blakey's Jazz Messengers. He's played with Phil Woods, Horace Silver, and Benny Golson. In the pop world, he's played and performed with Prince, Maxwell, and Little Louis Vega. In the genre, he's most synonymous with Latin. The list is way too extensive to list here, but just to name a few, Eddie Palmieri, Buena Vista Social Club, Eddie Gomez, and et cetera, et cetera. With all this, Brian Lynch is playing, always has this great personal fire and a feeling to all his performances. In my opinion, he's the kind of musician you want in your corner. His new album titled Madeira Latino, a Latin jazz interpretation on the music of Woody Shaw, is recording in full throttle from the moment the needle hits the record. And it's just what you'd expect from a Brian Lynch performance. My Dear Latino marks the second release this year that features Woody Shaw extensively. The first being Residence Records' Larry Young in Paris. And with this record, the world gets a double reminder of how great Woody Shaw was and how amazing his legacy is. Mr. Lynch, what led you to this Woody Shaw project? And what was the uh, musical inspiration behind it and the style you used in making the arrangements? As you may know... I've been involved with a number of recording and performing projects you know, over the last 15, 20 years in this mode of recasting the music of jazz icons into Latin jazz or Afro-Caribbean jazz format going all the way back to the record I did with Conrad Herwig, the Latin side of John Coltrane back in 1996. We did a number of records together in the 2000s, Latin side of Miles Davis, another kind of blue, 
flat side of Wayne Shorter and so on and so forth. I put a lot of time in and thinking about how these things could work, and I think I've developed a certain kind of style. I mean, my, my two loves in music are straight ahead, modern, progressive jazz, and Latin music. So putting them together in this sort of way was a natural to me. I just think Woody Shaw is, is such a great topic for this, you know, some artists are just natural for this concept. He listened to Latin music, Brazilian music. Many of the tunes really didn't take that much to put into this format. It was just more expanding them and reorchestrating them and putting a few different details. I like to adhere to, to the forms of Latin music, not just the rhythms of it. In other words, putting the kind of arrangement details that a great salsa tune would have. In, in, into a jazz tune, putting a montuno in and a, a mambo and ammonia and all the little details that make the salsa performance so exciting, I think, can work just as well with a jazz performance. There's definitely continuity between the Unsung Heroes recording and this one. Tradition is very important to me because I feel like I was so incredibly lucky to share with some really heavy lineages of music being able to play with Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers and being able to be the trumpet player in Horace Silver's quintet for a number of years. Incredible lineages of trumpet players and to be a part of that in my own modest way is still something that I'm working out the implications of even 25 years after Art Blakey passed away. That's my lineage. I think I have a role to play in communicating that to generations younger than myself. I'm really proud of what I've done with Unsung Heroes in that regard, and that's doing something like Madera Latino is another kind of expression of that. we get a little bit more in depth about two of the standout tracks on the album Zoltan and In a Capricorn Way easily two compositions that are landmarks in Woody Shaw's career. Yeah, the Capricornian Way is a 3-4 waltz time composition as played by Woody Shaw. I adapted it a little bit to make that triple meter into a 12-8 abuqua rhythm what sometimes people call the, the standard bell pattern rhythm. This is a duet between me and Dave Douglas, and it's really thrilling to, to match wits and chops with one of the great players of our time on this one. Zoltan obviously really spends itself to the adaptation. I mean, it's 
it's cast as a Latin tune in the first place. It's really making it completely uh, into the Latin rhythm instead of going back and forth from Latin rhythm to swing, like as on the original recording. The idea of making this also a vehicle for my fellow trumpet players to have the opportunity to pay tribute to Woody through this music is a big part of the project, too. And so having players, great players like the ones on Zoltan, Dan Douglas, Etienne Charles and Diego Ortola all on trumpet made it you know, really special. The counterpoint that was in Woody's original music really translated very well to like dueling duos of trumpet in the arrangement of Zoltan. I think the main things that were added there, a vamp or Montuno section later in the tune that gives an opportunity for the excitement of a percussion solo, brilliantly played by a little Johnny Rivero. There's an ensemble passage that is actually based on Woody Shaw's solo on recording of Zoltan that was recorded on news records, on his Love Dance record from the 1970s. Now let's let's go into the two originals on the album, Blues for Woody and Khalid and the Madeira Latino Suite. Blues for Woody and Khalid, obviously, is Woody Shaw and Khalid being Khalid Yassin, a.k.a. Larry Young, also from Newark, like Woody. And the two playing a lot together, both in Europe and on the Blue Note classic, Unity. There's a tune that I actually originally wrote many years ago and recorded in straight-ahead format one of my old records on Crisscross, Blues for Woody and Khalid. Of course, Khalid is Khalid Yassin, which is uh, Larry Young's Muslim name. So I expanded that and adapted it to Latin format as well. called the Madera Latino Suite. This is a four trumpet feature that really kind of runs the gamut of, of different feelings and styles with its four-part form. It really shows off everyone, I think, was very well. I try to employ a lot of the things that I've learned from my study of, of Woody's music into the writing of the parts of this piece.
how about in the Newark at the tune I've always loved by Woody? Obviously, a play on his hometown, Newark, Newark. Could you give us a little background of that song? Newark. It's basically what Woody wrote, but with these little changes in it. Again, I did add some melodic motifs and passages from Woody Shaw's solo on the song into some of the additional passages for the trumpet. There's definitely a lick in there, which is one of my favorite Woody Shaw licks of all time from the original recording. It becomes the uh, monia or the kind of riff section of the second part of the tune. In closing, I'd like to kind of talk a little bit more about Newark, Woody Shaw's hometown, a city that was teeming with original and groundbreaking talent before the riots happened. Talents like Andy Bay, Wayne and Alan Shorter, Sarah Vaughn, to name a few. I think one can't talk about Shaw or any of the artists I just mentioned without mentioning the city. What are your thoughts about that? It certainly does seem like that Newark has something unique about it. Maybe the fact that it's such close proximity to New York City, but at the same time, it maintained its own jazz community and in terms of the cultural community, you know, the African-American community and other communities that were involved in the jazz scene there. You know, you talk about Wayne Shorter, you talk about Woody Shaw, Tyrone Washington, Hank Mobley, you talk about players that are really very sophisticated, and but they have that real feel kind of feeling to their playing. Agreed and well said. Well, Mr. Lynch, thank you so much for your time today and speaking with us about your new album, Madeir Latino, the Latin jazz interpretation on the music of Woody Shaw. Thanks. Thanks so much for reaching out to me on this. It's great.
This is the major scale, jazz, past, present, future, and everything in between. This is the major scale, jazz, past, present, future, and everything in between.
That was Tanner Johnson, violinist. But before I get into that subject of our next segment, let's backtrack a little bit. We finished off the Brian Lynch segment, his Latin interpretations of Woody Shaw's music with Woody Shaw himself, Lotus Flower. And then we heard John Luke Ponte and George Duke's amazing rendition of Herbie Hancock's classic Cantaloupe Island. Tanner Johnson, you have a great sound. I, well, the first time I saw those two YouTube videos you have, I love the sound. Very, very soulful. You and the guitar player especially. Not saying that the rest of the group is not equal, but the two of you have a great interplay. And I, I know throwing comparisons around could be kind of corny, but definitely I could see a torch being passed. Stefan Grappelli, Django Reinhardt, Tanner Johnson. And the guitar player's name is? Daniel Kelly. Daniel Kelly. Howard. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that first YouTube performance. Sure. You start off with Strasbourg St. Dennis by Roy Hargrove. Yeah. Now that's that whole performance. It's grounded, but it definitely sounds like you're running off with some ideas. How much of that, of, let's say, let's talk about Strasbourg Dennis, how much of that is improvised, how much of that is rehearsed? That particular group, we came up with some arrangements that morning. I just told them this is what the form will be like. I would say a good good portion of it, maybe 90% of that is improvised, yeah. But we, as a group, we have been playing together. Myself, Brandon Miller, the bass player, and Daniel Howard, the guitar player, had all been playing together at different jams around town for a long time. So as far as that tune goes, we kind of knew how we usually played it and went off of what we were familiar with for the most part. There was definitely some extra stuff added. Certainly felt like the torch being passed, like John Luke Ponte, Papa John Creech, Leroy Jenkins, and I think you're grabbing it very well. The second set is more traditional right gypsy jazz yeah. hot jazz a little background about, about you where are you from and, and how long have you been doing this violin thing i started playing violin when i was five did the regular thing studied classical music and really enjoyed doing that for the first 15 years of my musical career and i played in orchestras but i was always an improviser even when i was only familiar with classical music i would listen to different concertos and things and I'd try to make up my own melodies and play things by ear rather than just going according to the book. So I would do more of that and I, I played in church and I would do a lot of pop renditions of church songs and just was able to freely Im improvise and do things on my own. And then I was approached by a fellow named Michael Allen Harrison, who is a piano player, jazz, kind of new age classical guy in town. And he invited me to come play a gig with him. Then I ended up being in his band and playing with him for five years, something like that. That kind of introduced me to the actual world of playing outside of, of a classical environment and playing more jazz centered music where there was a a melody that you played and then there were solos taken and there was a form that you followed etc so that was an amazing experience and kind of got me started
the band, Gerald Law on drums, Brandon Miller on bass, and Daniel Howard on guitar. And I knew them all from just gigging around town. Gerald and I taught at the same school in Winter Park. Brandon and I used to host a jam over at what used to be called the Winter Park Beer Company on Tuesday nights. And Daniel and I had just met each other from playing at different jams like Austin's Coffee and St. Matthew's Tavern, those kinds of places. Guys that I knew around town, Chris asked me to put this group together and those were some of the first guys I thought of. There's so many great players around town, but yeah, these guys really are, are good representatives of what is going on around Orlando as far as jazz goes. I just knew that when we got together, it would be something stellar put it together we had one small rehearsal played it as if we were just getting together and jamming now i was looking at my star is that an original or is that a cover that's an original yeah. okay I, I thought that might be let's talk about that song yeah that's something i wrote when i was at berkeley and again it's something that i kind of envisioned being sort of my take on a on a soul uh, motown tune like something that stevie would sing or something like that you know i was working that on that for a while i used it for a couple of projects in school i recorded it briefly while i was in college uh, with a group of guys a little bit of a different arrangement i think there was a percussionist not a drummer a guy playing cajon and other things and a keyboard player that was the initial arrangement and never really had an opportunity to record it and until now and so I was just like yeah let's do it it just kind of ha has a memorable melody that uh, I thought could be either played or sung and I wanted to bring it to the public in some way and I thought this was a good opportunity
then the next YouTube performance, which is a trio, much more in the gypsy jazz, right. hot jazz kind of Stefan Grappelli, Django Reinhardt mold. Now, let's talk about the background of that one and why, you know, the two different sets and styles. At the time, I'd been doing a lot of gigs as a gypsy jazz band. I played with a group called the Roseboom Trio in various different venues. So it was just part of my musicality and a part of the violin tradition as far as jazz is concerned. Gypsy jazz is what is usually associated with jazz violin. And so I wanted to show that that was a part of what I did as well. I had the instrumentation too. Those other guys are amazing players, Brandon and Daniel. I'd been working a lot on a lot of those tunes and just wanted to throw that in there as two different sides of what violin can be in the world of jazz. You open up with a classic Yiddish number <laughs> and the violin and yeah. the Yiddish music are, you know, intertwined. Right. I'm going to let you pronounce it, though. <laughs> uh, the first one is Be Mir Bis Duchesne. I actually don't know exactly what it means, but the lyrics of the song tell you that it means that you're the fairest in the land. So I don't know if how accurate that is. <laughs> that could be just some Broadway lyricist coming up with something, but yeah.
took on kind of like what you said, like a kind of a Yiddish feel. Wanted to show a little bit of sort of like a classical-esque gypsy virtuoso vibe to that. Yeah, that tune was a lot of fun to put together, especially since Brandon and Daniel are coming from a little bit more of a different background. They're not necessarily gypsy jazz players. And so it was really fun to kind of get their take on how that music is supposed to be played. To me, one of the songs that really knocked me out was that you can sing really well, and you do... Oh, Charlie, thanks, man. You're welcome. Charlie Chaplin's Smile. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah. When I just ended it off with a positive message. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about how you come upon that one. Yeah, that's one that I had heard for most of my life. Uh, my dad was really into watching old classic movies, and so, yeah, Charlie Chaplin was in there. Probably heard that from an old movie, old records from, you know, different crooners and things like that. And so it was one of the tunes... That's just in my bloodstream that I've heard for, for years and years. I started doing that when I was playing in the Rose Boom Trio, which is the Gypsy Jazz Project I was a part of for a while. I would play it on violin. We had our, our own arrangement of that. Then one day I decided to try to sing it. It worked. So <laughs> I, I wanted to feature another side of my musicianship, which is going beyond just the instrumentation and going uh, behind more the meaning behind the song, which is where these great lyricists come in. And they, they've all written these amazing lyrics for all these different songs that we play. And as instrumentalists, it's easy to forget that because we're so interested in what we can do on our instruments. That's a really important thing to me as far as jazz music goes. And I wanted to kind of feature that. And plus, I just love singing. It's just fun. Well, Tanner, it's been wonderful talking to you. I think you're amazingly talented. Thanks, and man. Pricked up my ears from the get go and got me out of my seat and onto my feet. <laughs> anyway, I look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. Smile though your heart is aching. Smile even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fear and sorrow Smile and maybe tomorrow You'll see the sun come shining through For you Light up your face with gladness And hide every trace of sadness Although it's here be ever so near that's the time you must keep on trying smile what's the use of crying you'll see the sun come shining through if you just smile your face with gladness and hide every trace of sadness and although a tear may be ever so near that's the time you must keep on trying smile what's the use of crying you'll find that life is still with This has been The Major Scale, produced and edited by myself, Kyle Eagle, and Chris Barani. Our theme music, Jazz Phantom by Chomsk. 
Special thanks to Kim Smith, Brian Lynch, Tanner Johnson, and WUCF-FM. Jazz and more.